Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Tuesday, April the 16th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Another night of playoff action, and I think everyone's talking about Alex Ovechkin knocking out Svechnikov in that Washington Capitals Carolina Hurricanes game. It's unfortunate you never want to see someone get knocked out, but I don't buy this that uh, Ovechkin shouldn't have fought him because he's 14 years older, because he's 40 pounds heavier. Everything I saw, it looked like it was, uh, you know, both guys wanted to engage, and both guys agreed to the fight, and it's unfortunate for the result. And it's not like Ovechkin slammed him down the ice. I think he, he had him by his collar, so he, he didn't exactly hold him up, but he didn't push him down, or he didn't, you know, th those fights happen so fast. Obviously, I've never been in a hockey fight, and I can barely play hockey. But it looked like an unfortunate incident to me. So that was that. And then we had the news of former Canucks coach Alain Vigneault being hired by the Philadelphia Flyers. Vigneault has taken the Canucks and the Rangers to the Stanley Cup Finals. Hasn't won one yet. Uh, didn't win one with any of those two teams. But we'll see if he can turn the fortunes of the Flyers around. So kind of two NHL stories that were big yesterday. We'd love your comments down below if you want to talk about any of those ones. For today, I want to continue my year-end grading series and talk about Josh Levo. Now, the forward was traded from the Toronto Maple Leafs to the Vancouver Canucks on December 3rd for basically um, probably a career AHL guy named Michael Carsoni. So I don't think we have to worry about too much about what we gave up, but let's talk about who we got. Josh Levo, December 3rd, traded from Toronto, and then he actually scored in his very first game against Minnesota the next night on December the 4th. Josh Levo, 25 years old. He's been in the league for four or five years uh, prior to this season, and he never played more than 12 or 15 games. So 12 games here, 11 games here. And then when he was traded from Toronto, basically the the organization tried to do him a solid by trading him to a place where he'd get playing time. And obviously that's a kind of a nice but not so nice way of saying that Vancouver had a lot less forward depth than Toronto, which is true. You can't argue that at all. Because Levo comes here, plays 49 games, and he gets 18 points in those 49 games, 10 goals, and eight assists that extrapolates to a 30 point season so obviously that's not first line material that's barely second line material but i see josh levo as a third liner but a solid third liner at that when he came to the canucks he played a lot actually in the top two lines he started off playing with pedersen and besser what a great way to to start you know with a new team and then he found his way on the horvats line quite a bit and he was able to go up and down the lineup i think that's why travis green liked about him he could play well, maybe you could argue he shouldn't be a first-line player, but he played on the first line, second line, and third line for the Canucks. He got power play one time a little bit, playing in the bumper position in the middle. He was on power play two as well. Didn't kill a lot of penalties, but he was able to, you know, he was able to have opportunities to build up his point total. So again, 10 goals, 8 assists in 49 games. That's 18 points extrapolated to 30-point season. So what do we have in Josh Levo? We have a relatively bigger body, six foot two, 195 pounds. He plays quite big. Uh, one thing he's good at, he's good at separating guys from the puck on along the boards. Kind of talked about that about Jake Vertanen yesterday. He, uh, um, you know, he, he, his vision, his hockey IQ is not bad. He's a decent passer. That's what I noticed in watching his games. But one thing I did notice, he's good. Uh, he has really good finish around the net. You know, 10 goals over 49 games. Not massive, but not bad. And a lot of his goals, you might re recall, were kind of from the left face-off dot, where he put a snapshot either on the goalie's short side or the far side. So uh, uh, Levo's got a really good snapshot, good wrister. Slap shot, we haven't really seen that much, but his snapshot is quite good. Actually, we have a lot of good uh, guys with good snapshots on the team. Besser, Pedersen, of course, Vertanen. But that's where a lot of Josh Levo's goals were scored. In the slot, maybe off to the side a little bit. Not a lot of goals off the break, um, you know, off the rush because he's not the fastest skater ever. Um, I think that's one thing he could work on. But overall, he was good from the face-off dots down. And the Canucks need more players like that. I kind of talked about that when, um, you know, you look at Horvat, you look at Pearson, you look at Levo. I wouldn't say that's a top line, but the th reason why those three guys played together, played well together, is because all three had the same mentality. They could rush the net and they could play well, control the puck, and score from the faceoff dots down. So I think that's a good thing about Josh Levo. He's got a good shot. His hockey IQ is pretty good. His passing, I think, is underrated. And he works hard, big body, and is able to move guys off the puck. Um, and he doesn't look out of place, actually, when he plays with, with really skilled guys. Some things that he could work on, his consistency is a big one. You know, in the six months that he was with the Canucks, I should say five months from December on, he had uh, pointless streaks of 
I think two five game ones, one six game one, and one seven game one. You could argue when you look at the math that makes sense for a guy who only gets you know um, you know gets point three points per game. That that would make sense that you have those droughts, but you still like to see those droughts being fewer and far between. Uh, again, like a, a one five or two fives, a six and a seven. That's a lot. You know, you add those up. That's um, whatever. That's twenty three points there. Uh, twenty three games without points spread over four four different runs, so to speak. So you like to see him be a little bit um, more consistent. Um, I think I thought his physical play was fine. I thought his offensive play was fine. Defensively, he was okay. You know, I never he was never pointed out as a liability or anything like that. So I think um, I think he played. He was fine. He was good enough uh, defensively. So I think when you add all that up. It was a relatively good, it was a pretty good season for Josh Lebo. And when you look at the fact that his contract, um, looking forward, actually, let's look at two things. Looking backwards first, I think the expectations, we didn't know a lot about him. And the fact that we barely gave anything up for him, and the fact that he came in and played a very solid role in our top six, probably argue going forward you want to be the top nine. I'll talk about that in a sec. So I think expectations-wise, he certainly surpassed expectations. In fact, uh, many people, you when you look at Lebo, P- Pearson, and Shen, all three good mid-season acquisitions for the Canucks. So he was he played over expectations, which is a good thing. You know, his contract was only $925,000 on his expiring second contract. So that's that was a good bargain for the Canucks to get that production out of a guy making less than $1 million. So I think that's a good thing too. And then, you know, I, so expectations, good contract, and it was, um, you know, on the, on the flip side, not that consistent or could be more consistent but given what he did and given where he played in the lineup, I give him a grade of a B, which in my terms is between good and very good. I say B plus is very good. B's good. Yeah, I, I think B's a good mark. And I put this on Twitter and most of you agreed with me. The majority of you said would agree with that B mark. So that's a good thing. And that's something Josh Levo can build on. So he is an RFA. He needs a new contract. Likely get a one or two year. I don't see the Canucks going more than three or more than uh Three years or more on Josh Lebo yet, but maybe give him a one or two year show me contract, show me type deal, and then we can talk about a, a bigger contract after that. But we know that there's going to be a lot of movement on the Canucks, especially up front, because there's a lot of contracts there. They will, depending on who they draft and where they draft and all those things, any free agency or any trades, the four group could look a lot different than it did this year when we start the season in October. So for Josh Lebo, good offense, better than uh, his expe- his play was better than expectations. Good contract, you know, played up and down the lineup. I, all those positives. The one thing I think he'd be more consistent, but that's um, that's the case for a lot of, say, middle six players. So, again, add it all together, I give him a solid grade of a B. Canucks fans, we'd love to hear what you think. Leave a comment below. I'd love to see if you agree with my ranking, do you, uh, my grade. Too, too tough, too lenient, whatever it may be. And leave your reasons uh, below as well in the comments. I'd love to read them. And subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Tomorrow I'll look at Tanner Pearson. Yet another mid-season acquisition. Although I'll be at later in the season in February at the trade deadline. So, you know, look forward to that tomorrow. Tanner Pearson tomorrow. But I would love your comments on Josh Lebo today. Enjoy the games today. Have a great day. God bless. Go Canucks go.